Live from San Francisco, it's theCUBE. Covering IBM Think 2019. Brought to you by IBM. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in San Francisco for IBM Think 2019. It's theCUBE's exclusive coverage. I'm John right here with Stu Miniman. Stu, it's been four days. We're on our fourth day, powering through a lot of interviews, extracting the signal from the noise. Number one live event coverage at theCUBE. Got two great guests here, Ashutosh Mooney, Vice President of Application Services within IBM, and Gary Deleuze, Chief Technology Officer at Nationwide Building Society in the UK. Great to have you guys. Thank you, John. Good Thank to you. have you. So obviously day four, applications, big part of the focus because the applications are now dictating the data strategy, the AI <coughs> with IA, and you've got cloud, multi-cloud underneath. So the, cha the changing market requirements around what apps are doing are super important. Oh, this yes, is a this. focus. It's dictating that the infrastructure, what to do. So the, this is the key to the cloud. Talk about what you guys are doing. Absolutely, absolutely. In fact, uh, not just for IBM, for clients mostly, for them to be able to ready for their customers, they need to make sure that their applications are up there for their customer experience as well. What we are seeing is most of these uh, clients today are saying that all the work that they have done in the past for the last five, 10 years, that's the core that they have built. Yeah. They're trying to look at how they can minimize the spend on that and maximize the spend on all the customer facing applications like to enhance the customer experience. And so they call the, that, and they do call that the workload. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> workload is code for applications. Gary, you're a customer of IBM. Sure. Take a minute to explain what you guys do first, then we can talk about some okay. of the things you're working on. Sure. Um, so we are a large UK based mutual building society. We have about 15 million members in the UK. Um, but you can think of us as a bank in many respects, most people do. Um, challenge for us, as, as you said, is, is basically we have 30 or 40 years of legacy technology. We need to transform that technology and also build the next generation of digital services alongside that technology. So for us, it's the combination of how do we transform that legacy core whilst also building for the new. And what are some of the use cases that the new technology is going to bring you? Because containers has been great with, with legacy because you don't have to kill the old to bring in the new. Yep. As you look at the modern modernization journey you're on, what are yeah. the guiding principles? What are the things you guys are looking at? Sure. How are you guys thinking that through? Okay, so a number of things. One is, uh, we've been on a 30 year journey towards looser and looser coupling and, and smaller and smaller microservices. So what you're starting to see is big applications, monolithic applications being broken down into services and then microservices. So for us, the key is the smaller and smaller the microservices, the more agility we can create, the more value we can create. And that loose coupling then becomes really important because that then allows us to deliver a high level of parallelism in yeah. development and change. So those are two key areas really. And how's it going? Um, today, yeah. good. So <laughs> Scar tissue, you're it's, learning. It's, yeah. it's learning and it's iterating and it's failing and it's understanding, but the main thing is, you know, the more we do, the more we learn, and the more we can then build that back into the next iteration. Yeah. Ashu, I always love to hear, especially the financial services, ones that have been around a while, that, that modernization and, yes. and how they do that. I couldn't help but notice you're both wearing the, you know, I heart AI <laughs> t-shirts. So, yep. wondering if you can connect the dots for us between that application modernization and the, the, you know, the wave of AI. Yeah, so I heard that uh, term fail fast and fail regular. I mean, it's all good until you actually have at least one success, right? So failing fast is good, but you cannot just keep failing. So where AI comes into play is primarily making sure that you are basing your those decisions on what have been proven right in past as well. So what we have seen, uh, especially for financial services is, even though the systems of engagement has changed, the fundamental principles on which the banking services or the insurance services are provided has not changed. Yep. So you're still providing the same set of services, just in different ways. The expectation of the client has changed, but the services remain the same. So our ability to be able to uh, look at what we have been doing in past, which services make sense to be microservice enabled, as Gary talked about, it's not that you just take all the functions and enable them. That's where we are able to bring uh, value to our clients. Yeah, uh, Gary, what's the impact on this on your ultimate end user? Yeah. Um, better value. So for us, it's about helping our members, or our customers, to make better financial decisions. And to do that, they need data. So what we're trying to do is to really take that legacy estate, which is really about locking data in at the core so we can use it, trying to liberate that data, get it out into the hands of our members so they can make better decisions. And AI is a really key part of that. Yeah, yeah, I mean that that was when we think back to that wave of big data, it was the I should be able to have smaller companies, you know, not take years and millions of dollars to be able to do that. Tell, tell us what's different about you know today in AI that 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 we might not have been able to do uh, five years ago. Um, there's a couple of things really. So one is compute power. 
So what you're seeing really is AI is, is not necessarily advancing massively in terms of the algorithms and the approaches and the methodologies. What you're seeing though is compute power and storage capacity growing at an exponential rate still. So what it's doing is enabling those algorithms to work in a way that they've never been able to do before. And we're getting to value quicker because the time it takes to, to reach that value is much shorter. Sure. I want to sure. get your perspective on, you mentioned parallel, breaking down, decoupling things into looser sets of services. This is certainly the cloud way, right? Mm. I mean, you can make APIs and have microservices, a big part of it. How is that going from a culture standpoint? Because this is one of the things we hear all the time is it's a cultural journey to one, get people lined up with that. And then what are some of the business benefits that you're seeing with this parallel? Is it, is it efficiency? Is it innovation? Where do you see that culture? What, what did you do to change the culture? Go, huh? Share some, because this is what people want to know about. Sure, sure. sure. So okay. in fact, what we are seeing is, uh, majority of the clients have started to look into this because everybody else was doing it. Because somebody digital native out there was doing it. So they, uh, some of them actually latched on f too quickly. They have not been able to change their internal culture within the organization. While the customers were ready, but their internal organizations were not. But I think clients like uh, uh, NBS have thought out a, uh, a fairly good strategy, and it would so, be great, uh, Gary, if you can share. What was your secret sauce? Did you like carrot a stick? You can say, hey, we got to go this way, or you burn <laughs> the boats, as they say. At the, uh, okay. How did you get people to, to go in the right direction? So for us, it, it, there's two really, really important related parts of this, the culture and the people. Um, from a culture perspective, you know, we've got teams of people who have been doing phenomenal pieces of work for 30, 40 years. Um, they're coming to the end of their career and you know, the technology that we're using, again, we're looking at end of service life. So it's how do, we, how do we get away from that world where we're constantly focusing on the legacy to start focusing on new technology? So it's bringing in new people with new ideas. It's changing the way we work. So we started to focus on things like agile, DevOps automation, new ways of working to allow people to, to really sort of liberate away from the old ways of working and to give them new ideas and new opportunities. Um, but as part of that as well, it's, it's, there's a couple of things in there for us which are really important. So one is bringing new technologies in and bringing new people in that can use those technologies. We also have to make sure we keep our own people trained up as well. Yep. So we can't forget the people that we've got. So it's, it's a, a set of different things. Culture, I mean, training people, is critical. We've well. got open source out there. It's like, yep. you know, every year is like a dog year and you got to keep up to date keep learning. That's right. And all these aspects of co-creation, right? So you cannot do it in isolation. If you're yep. doing it yeah. together, I mean, whether you use design thinking or not, right, that's a, that's, a, that's a way to do it. But I think the aspect of co-creating it with your end stakeholders and your own stakeholders who are involved is critical. Talk about more about that, because this is a big theme, co-creation. We love doing it with content. We're in the queue, we're doing it here with content. But when you get into development, yep. this is a new psychological dynamic, but also it's a productivity opportunity. Can you just share what you're seeing there and explain co-creation a little bit deeper? Yeah, look, so uh, let me talk hypothetically, right? So from hypothetical perspective, if we were able to look at an uh, organization or a platform where we are able to access an amount of uh, uh, computational power, computational skills, or programming skills, our ability to be able to do the most creative aspects for any use case, any industry, would be enormous. We just don't have that. We are limited to specific partners that we are working with, we are limited to the sp uh, specific employees that we have. But, uh, and we're limited to the uh, customers that we are catering yeah. to. I think if we expand, so while we don't have a uh, uh, handle of all the things that we have in play, but if we are able to bring in our customers, our internal stakeholders, as well as our partners that we are working with, and are able to build a common theme, and one of those common themes could be that I need to get you those services quickly, and so. then figure out how the three can actually work in tandem, will be able to make How does uh, that change your engagement model? Because I might be, okay, let's say I'm a, na a naysayer, I'm a skeptic. Well, we used to do that before. We used to partner and understand their needs and <laughs> bring solutions well. to the marketplace. Um, is it more software driven? So what's changed from the old way to the new way? Because, well, I agree with you, by the way. I'm not, I'm yeah. not a skeptic, but yeah. that was what a skeptic might say. Yeah, no, I think uh, earlier what was happening was they were, it was more offering led. And what I mean by offering led is these are the assets I have and let's make these assets find the solutions. Yeah. So what people will do is, they will say, this is the banking solution I have in this specific case, yeah. and let's figure out what 15 things I can do with those solutions. Mm -hmm. The approach now is different. The approach now is, this is what the customer is demanding, and the reason they are demanding is because customer's yeah. expectation is based on their most recent experience that they had somewhere else, yep. not necessarily with the bank. Yeah. They yep. may have experience in Uber. So when they have experienced that experience there, they want the yeah. similar services from the bank. So now the co-creation model is actually starting from the other side of the equation, rather than coming from asset out. 
So yeah. that's so that's, it's flipped. The old it model is. was here's what we got, here's what you can do. We're limited, yep. and now it's like here's what we want to do. Precisely. Program yep. the infrastructure and focus on software defined, agile. Yep. So this is, seems to be the new way. Very true. Yeah. Let Very me add true. to that as well because I think. One of the things that we've done over the last year is, is really focus in on what's our technology strategy. How is technology going to change our business? What we've done is created a strategy where our ambition actually exceeds our ability to execute. So from a co-creation perspective, we actually need really good partners that are going to work with us in that context and, and be strong challengers, you know, be our critical friend in that, in that process. So it's more efficient and more productive. You yep. get the best of both worlds and the outcomes are more aligned via agile yep. to be more acute and, and on target. Right, Pretty much the value yeah, proposition. Gary, actually, I'd love to get your, your perspective on like, what does it mean to have a cloud strategy today? We heard this week, <laughs> uh, you know, Ginny said, we're you know, entering chapter two of the cloud. We yep. took care of the 20% that was a little bit easier. We're getting 80 harder. Yep. Lots of customers I talk to, it's, it's changing all the time and things like hybrid and multi-cloud don't really mean much to them. I'm yep. curious in your shop uh, how you think of things. It's a great question. I think it, it's changing and it's different from industry to industry. So in banking, the challenge for us has always been regulation. It's been the regulators pushing back on public cloud and saying, you know, we're, we're nervous about that. Have you managed the security, the controls around that? So a lot of banking is focused on private cloud and you know, can we adopt the technology in those banking, those styles of technology delivery in the, the sort of private cloud way? What we're now starting to see though, see though is this shift towards public cloud with the economic advantage that public cloud has and the innovation that's going on in public cloud, it's becoming really attractive. So the strategy for us is about how do we make that happen? How do we build that multi-cloud model? And then how do we move that sort of hybrid model from private to public and get the advantages of the, the different styles of, of cloud compute? Yep. Guys, thanks for coming on and giving the insight. Love this DevOps co-creation model and really the applications are driving the requirements now with programmable infrastructure this is changing the procurement, it's changing the culture, hiring strategies, this is really disruptive. This is really the digital transformation, this is what it's all about. Very true. Great, Very great true. job, thanks for coming on, really appreciate it. Final question while we're here, <coughs> thoughts on Think this year in San Francisco, a little bit rainy February, but it's okay, but all tightly together, what's your thoughts, what's the themes, what's, your, what's the top story here? Gary, your thoughts first. Um, the weather one. makes me feel like home, it's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, no, it's been, a, it's been an amazing week, lots of innovation, lots of great conversations, so we've really enjoyed it. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think uh, we've gone around uh, myself, uh, even though we are definitely aware of what's going on in here, but I think there have been a lot of partner ecosystem that uh, has been here, and I think that collaboration has been great, so thank you. Well, it's been a great show, a lot of insight, customer perspective. Thanks for sharing what your journey's on and some specifics. Uh, we appreciate it. This is theCUBE coverage, I'm John Furrier, Stu Miniman. Stay with us for day four, we're four days of coverage, we're here on day four. Stay with us for more after this short break. <laughs>